Hey there. Ever feel like the world's telling you to hustle harder when all you crave is little inner peace? <laughs> We're diving deep into A Course in Miracles today. Okay. See if it lives up to its title. We'll start with the intro and preface. A sneak peek. Yeah, like a sneak peek behind the curtain of this system for finding peace. Yeah. And don't worry if miracles sound a bit too, you know, out there. I felt the same way at first. I but imagine. Yeah. Stick with us because what we're about to unpack is surprisingly practical. Yeah. Even if you're not particularly, like, spiritual. Right. So we've got our source material right here, the introduction and preface of a Course in Miracles. Uh-huh. And they don't waste any time, let me tell you. No, they get right down to it. They get right to the point. What's interesting is how the book, like, immediately blends psychology and spirituality. Yeah. It's not every day you see those two worlds collide. Absolutely. And yeah. that's what makes this text so unique, you yeah. know? It speaks a language that resonates on multiple levels. Right. Whether you're seeking spiritual insights or practical tools for personal growth. Yeah. Okay, so the introduction kicks off with this line. This is a course in miracles. It is a required course. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, but when I hear required, my inner rebel gets a little twitchy. It's certainly a bold statement, but I think what's essential here is not to interpret it literally. Yeah. You know, this isn't about dogma or like following a set of rules. It's more about acknowledging this this need we all have, this human need for peace, we all want it. Right. But we often create our own obstacles in a way. Exactly. It's like we're all kind of like enrolled in the school of life. Yes. And this required course is about like learning how to remove those self-imposed roadblocks to experience the peace, mm. the peace that's already within us. Absolutely. And the introduction goes on to lay out these three core principles. Nothing real can be threatened. Nothing unreal exists. Herein lies the peace of God. Right. Okay. Those are some big words. Yeah. Can you break those down for me a little? What do they really mean in a practical sense? You know. Absolutely. Let's start with real versus unreal. Okay. Think of it this way. Real refers to the things that are truly lasting. Love, connection, and that sense of inner peace we keep talking about. Right. On the other hand, the unreal kind of encompasses all the temporary stuff we tend to get caught up in. You know? Uh -huh. Possessions, status even our worries and fears. It's not about denying that these things exist, but rather recognizing that they're not the source of lasting happiness. So it's not that our problems aren't real. It's just that maybe we're giving them more power than they deserve. Right. By like clinging to them. Like they were these, these permanent fixtures in our lives. Precisely. And this is where that second principle comes in. Nothing unreal exists. Right. It's a reminder that all those things we fear losing, all those temporary situations that cause us stress, they're ultimately illusions. Okay. And once we kind of see through those illusions, we can tap into the peace that comes from aligning ourselves with what's truly real, what's truly lasting. That's where that herein lies the peace of God comes in. Yeah. Now, let's jump over to the preface for a second. Oh, okay. Which has this fascinating backstory about how the book came to be. Right. Apparently... Two Columbia University professors were involved in its creation. Yeah. Professors, not mystics. Right. And that's what I find so relatable about A Course in Miracles. Yeah. You know, it wasn't channeled by some guru on a mountaintop. Right. It emerged from a collaboration between two, you know, highly educated individuals who right. at least initially weren't even particularly spiritual, yeah. you know? In fact, Helen Schickman, the one who actually scribed the text, described herself as psychologist, educator, conservative in theory, and atheistic in belief. Oh. Talk about unexpected origins. Yeah. So we've got these skeptical professors diving into this project, and out comes A Course in Miracles. It definitely adds an intriguing layer to the whole thing, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. And I think it speaks to the universality of the human experience. Mm -hmm. We all grapple with fear, doubt, the desire for peace. Yeah. Regardless of our backgrounds or beliefs. Mm -hmm. You know, hearing about those professors and their initial skepticism, it makes me think about how we approach like personal growth these days. Right. It's so easy to get caught up in finding the right system. Right. Exactly. Or the perfect teacher. Yeah. But maybe it's less about the source and more about like the willingness to look inward even if it's coming from an unexpected place. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And speaking of unexpected, let's talk about how A Course in Miracles tackles this whole idea of forgiveness. Okay. 
because it's not what you typically think of when you hear that word, is it? It's not your typical Hallmark card forgiveness, is it? Not at all. I think of forgiveness, and I usually think about, like, letting someone off the hook for something they've done wrong. Sure. Right? Yeah. But the course takes a totally different approach. Yeah. It's less about the other person and more about our own internal state. Right. Right. It's about how we feel. So instead of condoning bad behavior, it's about freeing ourselves from the weight of, like, the resentment. Or the anger that we're carrying around. Yeah, the anger, the resentment. Absolutely. Huh? Yeah. Okay. So that makes sense, like intellectually. But how do we actually do that? How do we move from a place of anger or resentment to like genuine forgiveness, especially when it comes to like really deep seated pain? Well, you know, that's the million dollar question, isn't it? Um, right. And the course, you know, thankfully offers some some techniques. And and one technique that I that I really appreciate is this idea of repeating mentally repeating this phrase, uh, and, and you can say it out loud too, but I choose peace instead of this. Okay. Right. Okay. So in those moments where you're feeling triggered, you're feeling caught up in that past grievance, just taking a moment to consciously choose to shift your focus. It's like you're retraining your mind to choose a different response, one that aligns with that desire for inner peace. Yes. Yes, exactly. And, and you know, this all ties back to that idea of real versus unreal, right? right. The ego, of course, loves to hold on to grievances. It loves to see ourselves as victims. Right. But the Course would argue that this victimhood, this clinging to past hurts, is ultimately an illusion. Right. So forgiveness in this context is about recognizing that illusion for what it is and choosing to align ourselves with something more true, more lasting. And that something, according to the Course, is love. Mm -hmm. And and not not the sentimental Hallmark card kind of love, but um, it's talking about a deeper, more unconditional love that recognizes our inherent interconnectedness with all beings. Like we're all in this together. Even the people we perceive as having wronged us, yeah. they're on their own journey, right? Yeah. They're grappling with their own thing. Exactly. They're grappling with their own fears, their own insecurities. And that's a really radical idea, isn't it? It is. To be able to see past the hurt, past the ego's need to be right. Yes, and recognize that shared humanity. And and it reminds me of that line from the preface, beyond this learning cannot go. It's like once we truly grasp this concept of forgiveness, of choosing love over fear, of releasing our attachment to the to the unreal, that's when that's when true transformation can occur. It's not just about intellectually understanding these ideas, but about embodying them, right. living them out in our daily lives. Living them out. You know, it's funny how a single sentence like Beyond this, learning cannot go. Yeah. Can really stick with you. Yeah. It's like a riddle almost. It is. What do you think it means to go beyond mm. learning in this context? It's a beautiful question. And I think it really gets to the heart of what A Course in Miracles is all about. You know, it's not just about accumulating knowledge yeah. or, or even intellectually grasping these concepts. It's about embodying them, right. about bridging that gap between like knowing and being. So it's about taking all of this, yeah. the forgiveness, the focus on the real, the choice for love over fear, and actually like living it. Yeah. Which is easier said than done, I think. Absolutely. It's a lifelong practice. Right. A continual process of choosing to see ourselves and the world through a different lens. Right. But, you know, the good news is the Course suggests that we already possess everything we need to embark on this journey. We do. Yeah. It's not about becoming someone else or achieving like some elevated spiritual status. It's about remembering who we truly are beneath all the, the layers of conditioning and fear and, you know, ego driven desires. Yeah. We have this internal teacher within mm. us, mm -hmm. this deep well of wisdom and guidance. And maybe just maybe a Course in Miracles is like a map that helps us tap into that inner compass. It's like a gentle nudge to remind us that peace isn't something we find outside of ourselves. It's something we cultivate from within. Exactly. And that kind of peace, that deep inner knowing that we are inherently worthy and whole. Yeah. That's where those miracles really start to unfold. That's where the miracles happen, not necessarily in some like, you know, grand supernatural way. But in those subtle shifts. Right. In our perception, our relationships, our ability to, you know navigate the ups and downs of life yeah with more grace with more ease yeah it's like the course is inviting us to participate in like the greatest miracle of all yes the transformation of our own hearts and minds beautifully said wow you know as we kind of wrap up this deep dive on a course in miracles i'm realizing we've barely scratched the surface 
Such a dense, complex text. So much to unpack. But if there's one thing I hope you take away from this conversation, it's this. What if true peace, that deep inner knowing that the Course keeps talking about, what if it's not about changing our external circumstances, but about transforming our internal relationship with the world? That's it. That's the question. It's not about waiting for things to be perfect or for life to get easier. It's about finding that sense of peace and wholeness right here, right now, in the midst of it all. Mm. And, and maybe that is the most radical act of all. Maybe it is. It's been so great exploring these ideas with you. And hopefully this deep dive has, you know, sparked your curiosity to learn more, to maybe even crack open A Course in Miracles yourself. See what resonates for you. Yeah. Until next time, keep those minds open and those questions coming. Thanks for joining us.